Greetings, this is General CJG here, coming to you with a surprise of sorts. Well, it wouldn't be much of a surprise if you guys have seen the previous video called the uh, New Canon Contradictions Rant, where Hansen went in a glorious <laughs> rant about the contradictions. And this video is pretty much gonna be kind of an, an extension of that, but instead of just talking about how this is our contradictions make no sense instead we're actually going to be showing and spotlighting those contradictions to show proof that yes the disney star wars continuity is absolutely messy and it needs some severe cleanup so yeah now joining me here is well the man that made the ranch video from last time of course the always fantastic captain henson Mm hmm Yep. And also joining us here is... And this is the Spider-Fed Maniac. Mm hmm Yep. Who is Disney Star Wars. Well, figuratively. <laughs> Indeed. So, without further ado, we're pretty much going to be doing this. Now, before we get into the contradictions, there is one thing we have to clarify quickly, and it's the quote-unquote canon hierarchy that's in, set in Disney Star Wars. I say quote-unquote because there's no real, like... Uh, blueprint or mention or anything about it. It's just one that indirectly exists. So who wants to explain that? <laughs> Essentially, the films and shows are important, or that's the top tier canon. And then you got several pegs down, everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the canon hierarchy we got so far. So... That's how Disney Star Wars uh, or the new canon treats their sources, basically. So, yeah, that's what it is. So now without further ado, so let's get through the contradictions. Now, quick note, we're not going to be mentioning anything regarding the sequel trilogy era. Because that pretty much is an entire video on its own, which is going to be part two on this. So we're going to be tackling basically anything that does not involve the sequel trilogy era itself. Okay, so no Aftermath Trilogy, no sequels, none of that for now. We're, we're going to be dealing with everything else from episodes 1 to 6, and maybe even have Republic Era if we got some contradictions there. So that's what we'll be dealing here. So without further ado, so let's begin. So do you guys got any contradictions on your own? That you I got up? a contradiction. Mm -hmm. okay. Originally, Boba Fett and Jango Fett's armor were described to be made out of Durast. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the Mandalorian, you can see when stormtroopers are blasting their rifles, Boba Fett's armor is deflecting blaster bolts and not even doing anything, which a Dura Steel would definitely make him die or at the least get him injured. We can know that, yes, Boba Fett's armor in the Mandalorian is now, for some reason, best scar. <laughs> yeah, go figure that out. <laughs> So, there's that. <laughs> Indeed. So, okay, so, that one pretty much said his first one, so I'll start lightly with this first one. So, first, in Star Wars Rebels, apparently when we see Castle, there is no, like, storm or huge storms or anything surrounding the planet, but in Solo, a Star Wars story, apparently there is. So, where did the storm go? <laughs> Uh, got an explanation on that one, guys? I mean, not here. Who knows? Rebels is chronologically after Solo, so. <laughs> okay, well, I guess there's that. That was a simple one, but here's a more complicated one. The no dark side force goes rule. Oh, I'm pretty sure that one's all too familiar with this one. So, according to. Dave Filoni, and I believe it was the Clone Wars? I remember what source uh, it was, but he basically said that dark side force ghosts don't really exist in Star Wars, or that they're not possible to exist, but of course in Rebels we see dark side force ghosts of Night Sisters, there's Darth Vader in DCW Season 6, and there's the Lord Moment Spirit in Darth Vader 2017 comic series that lives in a mask. And Son of the Atomir also had a dark side force ghost. So, <laughs> what do you guys think of this one? I don't know about Darth Bane, whether that was an illusion or whatever in TCW. 
Mm -hmm. I think that was more so just an illusion, not actually him. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what about the others? The Night Sister, Dark Side Ghosts, and Lord Momin? Wait, where was it mentioned that uh, no Dark Side Force Ghosts? Who mentioned that? What? Dave Filoni. Dave mm -hmm. Filoni on one of the. Oh, yeah, it was the behind the scenes on the Mortis arc. Why they didn't do the Revan and Bane Force Ghosts. <laughs> Ah. Well, clearly he contradicted himself later on. <laughs> so. Well, then again, isn't the behind the scenes made before the Disney's canon? I mean, it would have been. I mean, it would have. Well, it was still a contradiction back then. Oh, wait, it is. It was still a contradiction even back then. Yeah, it was because there was a Jedi pretty much says otherwise. <laughs> so, there is that. <laughs> Anything else to mention on this one? No. no. Okay, so next, okay, this is, an, this is an interesting one. I think Doan can probably explain more this one. So in the Tarkin novel, apparently it stated that hyperspace traveling was first invented in 1032 BY. So that must have meant that the Galactic Republic must have been created that same year, because if there's no hyperspace travel, then how the hell would they pretty much have all the core worlds and everything under the ban of the Republic? However, Master and Apprentice, the book written by Claudia Gray, says that the Republic has existed since 10,000 BBY. And then several Disney Star Wars sources, like the Star Wars book from 2020, claim that the Old Republic existed since as far back as 25,000 BBY. So which one is it exactly? <laughs> I mean, the movies, episode 4 said that over a thousand generations, the Jedi were guardians of peace and justice of the Republic. Mm -hmm. And this book thinks it. This book thinks it's so important that it could contradict the George Lucas movie. Like, who does she think she is? Like, there's that. However, how is it that there's three sources that are trying to basically make their own version of the Republic existing for a thousand generations? Like, so one says it's ten thousand years, another says twenty-five thousand years, and another one says it's one thousand years. Like, and. I find the thousand hyperdrive being invented in 1032 BBY to be unbelievable because that's when the war against the Fit ended. And that's when 1032 BBY is the, in Disney Star Wars timeline is assumed to be the year when Darth Bane from Disney Star Wars created the Rule of Two. Mm -hmm. But my question is, if hyperdrive was invented in 1032 BBY, how the hell did the Republic or the Old Republic fought against the Sith when they don't have Republic. I mean, did they fight in one planet? Um. <laughs> or were the planets so close to each other that they didn't need any hyperspace? Like, yeah, this stuff doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Henson, what are you going to say on that one? Uh, this is just a bizarre one because this is just one of those cases where they're just throwing out dates, not really thinking about the ramifications of what they mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so yeah, uh, now it's possible the Star Wars book, from, uh, because it came out in 2020, that's probably the most relevant one right now, whereas the other two came out years before. So that probably retconned the other two, though it begs the question of why the other two dates even came out, but <laughs> there's that. <laughs> so yeah, anything else to mention on this one? Uh oh. No. Okay. Next. So this one involves Rogue One. So remember Dr. Cornelius Sevesan and Ponda Bava? You know, the two guys that wanted to bully Luke Skywalker in the cantina in episode four? Yeah, I don't like you either. Let's go. <laughs> so basically, if you guys remember Rogue One, they appear in Planet Jetta, which like half an hour to an hour later, it ended up being nuked by the Death Star and somehow they escaped alive. So, how did that happen? <laughs> Anybody can... I mean, I don't know if there was some kind of a weird Disney Star Wars comic thing. It's like they somehow escaped before all that happened. So, before the Imperials. Well, Imperials by the laser, they escaped. This isn't really a contradiction. This is more so, I mean, yeah, you could easily say they left the planet before it, ex you know, before that area was destroyed, it's more so just, you mean to tell me that those two just so happened to be in that area? It's a problem that Star Wars tends to, uh, it's a problem that tends to affect Star Wars of, 
the universe feeling incredibly small, this is one of those things. Mm. Them being there isn't necessarily a problem. It's more so just making the universe small, and there's no reason for them to be there outside of wink, wink, nudge, nudge, let's reference the original. Hmm, yeah. Now, I did make some research, and the only source I could get that says that they did escape, that they were already leaving the spaceport before it was nuked, was basically the first draft writer of Rogue One, Gary Wita. He pretty much said that Everson and, and Bob were already leaving the Jedi spaceport, but that's it. There's no, like, actual source book or anything basically saying that they were already leaving, so it's just his word. So that's all we got. Anything else to mention on that one? No. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Next one is a bigger one. It, continuing with Rogue One. So the ending of Rogue One. Okay. So in the beginning of Episode 4, we remember how pretty much Darth Vader and his Star Destroyer assaulted the shit out of the Tanti Four and taking prisoners alive, right? And Leia pretty much said, hey, we're on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. So you shouldn't be doing this shit. The Imperial Senate would not allow this shit. And Darth Vader was like, uh -uh, you are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. You're holding the Death Star plans. So you better tell me where the hell are they? So that's basically what happened. Now, one of the Imperial officers of Vader pretty much said that holding her would be dangerous because if word of that entire attack on 24 got out, it could generate sympathy for the rebellion in the Imperial Senate. So basically, this was more like Vader's hunch in figuring out where the they had Death Star plans because they didn't really have any like legit evidence showing that, oh, the Rebels actually committed robbery. So there's that. However, Rogue One pretty much, you know, if you saw the Battle of Scarif, a humongous rebel fleet attacked the Imperial base on Scarif, and they literally stole the Death Star plans, transmitted them to the rebel cruiser, and the rebel cruiser was already escaping, only to be intercepted by Darth Vader's Star Destroyer, and the, and the crew was forced to escape to the Tanti-4, right as Vader was personally murdering his troops, like... Wait, how I mean, is <laughs> that is extremely stupid if you look at it because Vader literally sees the rebel soldiers in the exact uniform going to Tantive 4 and the ship escaping. And then Princess Leia tries to light in front of Vader's face saying this is a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. Either Leia is an idiot in Disney Star Wars continuity, which I'm pretty guessing that is true, because why would you lie to someone? who literally saw your soldiers steal the plants and try to escape from you, which doesn't even make any sense, right? It makes no sense. But it's not just Leia. Like, if what the Imperial officer said regarding that if the Senate would actually give sympathy to the rebellion was true, and then this then this means that literally it was just Vader just following like a hunch or some sort of like a, like a thought that maybe the Tanti-4 was harboring the Death Star plants. If we take Rogue One into consideration, yeah, there's a lot of evidence that they took the Death Star plans. They have stolen Imperial material. They committed robbery openly in front of the freaking Empire. Like, yeah, it, that's like putting a humongous... That's like committing a, a bank robbery and then being like, uh, like... And everyone sees you and then you pretty much try to get away with somebody following you. And then you're like like in the other part of the city uh, while, the, while the guy that was chasing you, the officers, they pretty much see like... Uh, they capture you and you're like, oh, I was just on a diplomatic mission. I wasn't doing anything. I didn't do any robbery. <laughs> yeah, though. tell that to someone who actually believes that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... There's also the issue of Vader saying several transmissions have been beamed aboard the ship. So, but, wait a second. It's, he says several transmissions, but the Death Star plans was in the actual disc. Well, it was an actual disc. Well, supposedly the movie is trying to say that the transmission is the Rogue One team pretty much transmitting the Death Star plans, but that's just one transmission, so it's not several, so where did the other transmissions well, came from? And not to mention, it still doesn't work. Even if we go with the explanation of, oh, they tried multiple times to transmit the plans, again, Vader would already know that they have the plans. The whole idea of several transmissions that have been beamed aboard the ship can only make sense within the context of, oh, this ship received tr several transmissions which correlate to other rebel activities. 
Mm -hmm. But in this case, they wouldn't. So Vader saying all this doesn't really mean anything. I mean, they would have all the evidence they need. So it's not like they have to, quote unquote, save face here because they're completely justified in their actions. Mm -hmm. And also, Vader, again, Vader knows that what they transmitted onto the Tantive Four are the plans. Yeah, because if you actually, the original cut of World 1 did have Jin Erso send the plans by a transmission, but they somehow just, ah, ignored that or some. No, no, wait, they, like, what was the actual movie saying? Was it a disc or she sent, like, that's confusing. Okay, so what she did was get into one of the balls that had all sorts of discs. They got the one that has a Death Star, and they pretty much got into some sort of a transmitter, and they transmitted the plants into the Rebel Cruiser, and the Rebel Cruiser printed it on a disc themselves. So that's how it went. So... Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. Now, the Rogue One Ultimate Bistro guy tries to explain this... Uh, in some sort of way to make this make sense, but it only makes it more confusing. So supposedly the visual guide explains that the Imperial base on Scarif was built to secretly store away their most classified projects to not let the Imperial Senate know about them. So apparently Scarif is like a base that apparently houses the most classified projects that for some reason the Empire wants to keep hidden from the Imperial Senate. Even though the Empire is the one ruling the galaxy, and Palpatine's Emperor of the Galaxy, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> and most people in Coruscant believe what Palpatine said. <laughs> so... Yeah, these things struggle to make any sense. It was better they stayed quiet and just let the plot all in. <laughs> oh my god. What do you think of that explanation, Vincent? It does make sense, but... It's one of those things where the Empire is the Senate, essentially, so they would have no real reason. Well, I should say, if they were to have a base that houses, you know, all their classified shit, it wouldn't be to hide it from the Senate. It would just be to have a secure location for it so it doesn't get out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed. Let's move on. Okay, so next one. Okay, this was an interesting one. So one of these is Star Wars comics, uh, Star Wars 2015, uh, issue two. It showed Darth Vader literally using the Force in by basically lifting an at 80 foot with his hand and later crushing the entire walker with Han Solo inside the at 80 And yet with that, Han Solo still does not believe the Force is real until Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> So. Wait, did Han Solo in the at saw Vader actually doing a motion with his hand? Yes, oh. yes. Stretching the hand, literally lifting the, the foot, and literally with the same hand, crushing it. Almost crushing it until the walker pretty much shot Vader. Right. So. Yeah, there's no defense for this. <laughs> Anson, thoughts on that one? <laughs> Just that this is the problem, or should I say issue, ah ha 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 with the uh, ongoing Star Wars comics, I say plural because we have multiple volumes, mm. is that because they focus so... Well, the main focus are the trio, it's the same problem as TCW, where you want to focus so heavily on the trio, the main characters of the movies, that you have to write scenarios that don't really fit. In the case of TCW, we got shit like Obi-Wan fighting Grievous multiple times, <laughs> oh, yeah. even though he shouldn't fight him until episode three. And in here, well, we got something like this. <laughs> yep. So, <laughs> apparently Darth Vader blocking Han Solo's blaster bolts with his hand, it was... I think it's nothing compared to better literally crushing an at team from Han Solo. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I mean, did anything... Well, did anything specifically say that he didn't believe the Force until he literally was, Empire? He literally was saying, that's not possible, the Force is not real. He was saying it at the same time he was getting crushed by Vader's grip <laughs> inside the at team. Yeah, and this makes it more stupid. If a dude crushed you while you were in at 
Why do you think it's a good idea to shoot a blaster at that man? Don't you think you'll have more stronger powers? What do you think was a good idea to fire blaster at a guy at fifth floor who could literally crush an AT-80? Think, Han Solo. That was just instinct on Han's part. I mean, yeah, but still, we all three, the three of us know that Han still did not believe in the Force right up until Empire Strikes Back. So that normally is the case, but apparently it's comics as otherwise. <laughs> so there is that. Anything else to mention on this one? Yeah. Okay, next one. <laughs> okay, this is an interesting one. <laughs> so Star Wars, uh, the same comic series, Star Wars 2015, issue 12. It has Dengar pretty much being thrown out of a building with a thermal detonator and exploding in his face. And somehow he survived with no injuries <laughs> in the four issues later and Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah, it somehow survived. Like the, the, the thermal detonator exploded in his face and he survived that with no injuries. No scars, nothing. Yeah. The comic does not explain it. Literally just jumps into it. <laughs> Somebody got an explanation for that one? No. So, yep, there's that one. <laughs> okay, so that was a quick one, but yet another one that makes no sense. Next one, okay, this one probably will piss off Henson. So, Darth Vader, there are several times in the comics where he literally kills his own stormtroopers. In Star Wars 2015 issue 2, he pretty much uses stormtroopers as human shields to block blaster fire <laughs> instead of using his own lightsaber. And then in Darth Vader 2017 issue 2, he literally kills his stormtroopers just for target practice while he's searching for a lightsaber to corrupt and possess. <laughs> so, yeah, thoughts on that? <laughs> Were they part of Bible first? They were like stormtroopers and like just literally killing stormtroopers. In fact, in Darth Vader 2017, apparently Palpatine forgot to announce to the Empire that Vader was already his subservient. And by the time Vader was like uh, searching for his lightsaber, uh, granted, he got, he got a droid telling him, hey, I got the clearance codes, I could just clear you in so you don't have to fight all the troops. But Vader's like, no, nah, let me handle them. And he pretty much takes down all the starfighters and then goes inside the base and literally kills all the stormtroopers with the force. <laughs> and then grabs a lightsaber and literally slashes them. <laughs> he went on a murdering rampage for no reason other than he just wanted to test his abilities. <laughs> so, uh, so, thoughts on that? Yeah, that's just stupid. It's stupid, but it also makes you wonder, wait, didn't Darth Vader just kill his troops when they were incompetent, not just for the sake of killing them? <laughs> like, I mean, normally Vader only does that to imperial officer mm -hmm. he wouldn't do that to normal troops because what would they know they're not in charge of anything mm -hmm. yep but yet apparently all this time Vader not only sacrificed his own stormtroopers as human shields against blaster fire but he also kills them for target practice I guess <laughs> okay <laughs> Henson what are you gonna say on that one <laughs> I don't really have anything to say here Okay, so, okay, next one, then in the Vader Down comic, so we see Vader hunting down Luke, Han, and Leia, Luke in particular, so, and they, they have to bring them either dead or alive to the Emperor, makes sense, because there's a rebellion, and the Death Star had already been destroyed by this point, so, but apparently he failed in doing that because Carbon, the Mon Calamari with the General Grievous wannabe robotic body with the four lightsabers, uh, he pretty much showed up and he was like, Vader, I'm gonna fight you to see who's the best one. And they took it out and they allowed Luke, Leia, and Han to escape. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I wonder how the Emperor will receive that by hearing, wait, you two were fighting each other instead of crushing the rebellion once and for all? What the fuck were you two thinking, you idiots? <laughs> like, do you think the Emperor would want the rebellion better than anything, but... No, I, I, and they fight among themselves instead of capturing the rebellion. Mm hmm. Yep. So, there's that. Oh, oh and... people have different priorities. Oh, wait, that's stupid. It is stupid. Oh, and then in the next issue, after Bader Down finishes, apparently Bader delivers Carvin's body. Like, he pretty much killed Carvin. And Palpatine was like, oh, yes, good. Now, Bader, go and do this other task. Like, no punishment for allowing the rebellion to escape. Wait. <laughs> Palpatine is not the type of person who just let Vader go after wasting his time fight. Like, what? 
Uh huh. Yeah. This is character assassination. <laughs> uh huh. Henson, what do you got to say on this one? So yeah, let's move on. <laughs> okay. So there's that. Then the next one. This one is about Star Wars Rebels. So apparently the Jedi and Sith holocrons. If you use the Force with both at the same time, you can actually combine them together to make some sort of jigsaw puzzle in an amazing show of light and grant the user with Force visions and knowledge. Because I'm sure the Jedi and Sith that hate each other for passion will design their own relics to work and respond with each other. Like that. Uh-huh. Got something to say on that, though, one? Yeah, I wonder what idiot thought that was a good idea, like, Get the Sith and the Jedi decide to agree. We're gonna make this stuff and we're gonna align them to give force vision. Like, did, would anyone actually do that? Uh, I don't know, Hanson? I suppose I could see the Sith designing their holocrons to work like this, but I don't see the reason why they would. So, this is one of those things where you could explain it, but. I would have to see what that explanation is. Have we even gotten any explanation since that episode came out? As far as I'm aware, no. Mm. But it's possible. Well, then that one has been left unanswered. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, next. Oof. This is a big one. So apparently time travel is a thing in Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah, remember in Rebels, Ezra traveled using the temple, traveled to time to save Ahsoka. So, and there's also that time the Darth Vader actually tried to create a portal to rescue Padme from death in Darth Vader 2017 issue 23. So, time travel is a thing in Star Wars now. <laughs> so, thoughts on that? Yeah, it will. I mean, uh, all this is in universe justification of them not changing the past. Or reality like they wanted. Mm, I think, Henson, you got the answer for the Rebels one, uh, if you remember. As for the comic, well, the comic pretty much has Vader actually going to the portal, but instead it's, it's like some sort of like a vision of sorts that pretty much says that Vader was created, uh, that, sh that was conceived <laughs> by Shmi, apparently having some sort of uh, dark side influence, pop this influence inside her. Oh yeah, that's another plot hole, which... <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah it's playing it, not helping yeah, so, so yeah, so that comic, uh, apparently it's reasoning for why time travel doesn't happen, it's because a portal is destroyed, so there's that. Anson, what's the reasoning for time travel no longer being a thing in Rebels, or Star Wars? Well, uh, the uh, world between worlds, or at least the way to access it was closed off in Rebels, so can't access it. And even with the world between worlds, it was not necessarily time travel. It's really hard to describe. Technically, you could call it time travel, but eh. What I'm wondering is, is it that time travel of the same timeline going back? Or is it time travel of going to a different alternate dimension? No, it's... We're looking at a linear timeline here. Mm. In that case, then it has to at least be time travel. Because if it was if it was alternate dimensions, then maybe you could kind of explain Ahsoka being janked off from dying uh, at the hands of Bader at the end of season two. Well, no, we don't actually see that. The idea is that Ezra pulled her into the world between worlds. So it's that it's more so just revealed what her fate actually was we actually see it because at the end of season two the last shot is ahsoka walking back into the temple on malachor so the idea was always that ezra pulled her into the world between worlds and that's how she survived okay. it was meant to happen is, is this some kind of a terminator type of situation like the t-800 and car reese were always meant to be sent back and it's like Ezra was always meant to pull Ahsoka from the world of worlds. A world between worlds. Yeah. It was meant well, to. Well, I mean, 
in the context of, I mean, in the meta context, they had planned for that to be the case. And in terms of the in-universe thing, it's possible it was always meant to be. We are dealing with the Force, after all. There, yeah, yeah. There is that, though it begs the question of how many more of these time-traveling temples exist, and if we're going to see another one in some other Disney Star Wars media soon. So... Mm. And if one of these decides to do anything to change the events of any of the movies, particularly the original trilogy or the prequels, that's going to be a big problem. Bigger than I'd Rebels. say the problem with this is that we don't have enough explanation on how it actually works. Mm. I mean, granted, I wouldn't, I don't like the idea on these temples on principle, but if you are going to have them, you have to establish well-defined rules. Mm. There is that. Uh, do you think it's possible one of the later TV shows, you know, the, all the TV shows that are being announced, do you think they could have another one of these or something like what happened in the Darth Vader comic? It's possible. Mm, then we're going to have to prepare for when they put time travel again, if they do. So that's going to be something. Anything else to mention on this one? Yeah. Okay. So next. Okay. This is an interesting one. Kyber crystals. Oh, boy. So, <laughs> okay. So kyber crystals, for those who don't know. So who wants to explain how kyber crystals works in Disney Star Wars? <laughs> Uh, kyber crystals are lightsaber crystals, which, based on the force alignment of the user, could change the color of the blade. But I don't know what kind of force alignment you have to be to have a black color, or a purple, or a yellow, but that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's the basic point. And you put the crystal in the lightsaber, and then it somehow works. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so yeah, basically uh, the force user that uses the, the lightsaber, uh, depending on the force alignment, it pretty much uh, determines the color of the lightsaber. Uh, now, in the case of Darksiders, that's different. So they actually have to corrupt the lightsaber crystal to turn it into red, which is what happened with one of the examples we saw with that was Darth Vader doing it to the lightsaber he had just acquired from this Jedi he killed, and he pretty much turned the lightsaber from crystal from green to red, and he got the lightsaber going red so so that's pretty much how it works now this begs the question okay so if cover crystals work like this how is it that we only have blues and greens across the prequel trilogy and why only like one purple lightsaber and how come Anakin never turned his saber to red in Mustafar so on and so forth <laughs> like how do you explain this one guys uh, you don't because the EU's explanation of, in the EU, even the Sith Lords had lightsabers like purple, blue, or green. And some Sith Lords who wanted to have red lightsabers usually did that using a synthetic crystal. The idea that the Sith Lords only use red lightsabers is already baffling, but let's give them the argument, because it is written like that. Even if we give him the argument, it still makes no sense in regards to the movies. Or hell, yeah, why did an Anakin's lightsaber color change? Like, how does that work? He had plenty of time to corrupt the crystal. So... Uh, you got any explanation for that, Henson? I not really. My issue with the bleeding of the crystal is that that is a natural thing. Whereas in the EU, for instance... The use of artificial crystals, I think, further emphasize the point of people aren't meant to use the dark side. And in that case, the only way you can use a kyber crystal is if you are aligned to the light side, as in, you know, the correct path. But in the new canon, it's a matter of, oh, using the dark side is actually a valid thing. As in, like, what we see at the crystals. The Sith, we see, get crystals through, you know, bleeding of a regular kyber crystal. They're no longer artificial. So, thus making the use of the dark side valid. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah, <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> Indeed. So, anything else to mention on this one, guys? No. Okay. Next. Okay. This is a big one. So, multiple Disney Star Wars comics. They feature Luke Skywalker facing off against Darth Vader face to face, lightsaber duel before Empire Strikes Back. In particular, Star Wars 2015 issue 2 and even Vader Down. So, <laughs> what do you guys think of this one? Uh, okay, the people are gonna use the whole oh, thing you did that would split up the mind's eye. Yeah, here's the thing with things like split up the mind's eye or Marvel comics. Those were written in a time when there was only one Star Wars movie. And to be honest with that, what would be the most popular character in Star Wars besides Han Solo or Luke 3? Darth Vader. Yeah, so he's obviously gonna be in there. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're living in the 21st century where there are a lot of things established in the Star Wars universe. And the universe is way bigger, right? I mean, it's not 1978 anymore. It was like 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. So, Hanson, what are you going to say on this one? I just said this is one, this is more so a, yeah, it doesn't necessarily contradict anything, but it just feels weird. Well, it technically kind of does, because you remember in Empire Strikes Back, uh, like the first, it strongly feels like the first time Luke and Vader ever faced off, because they don't seem to have any, like, history between each other, other than Vader killed Obi-Wan and Luke just witnesses from far away. And if Luke had Well, that's Vader... the thing, though. Nothing is ever outright stated. It's not like Episode 3 in TCW in regards to Obi-Wan and Grievous fighting, mm -hmm. where through dialogue, we know that that's episode three is the first time they're actually fighting but in this case we have really no indication that i mean okay by watching empire strikes back you can gather that yeah they haven't seen each other at or since each other. episode four hmm. they could have met a few times but that more so just feels weird and unnatural like they shouldn't be meeting up hmm. Not to mention, uh, if they had actually met up before Empire Strikes Back, then Vader chances are would have probably already beaten Luke Skywalker in combat, maybe even gotten some scars or anything from their duel. So the fact that an Empire Strikes Back is the first time that we pretty much see Luke actually getting, well, his hand chopped off, well, there's that too. Yeah, the EU had an elite justification saying, like, the crystals in the planet in Split of the Mind's Eye somehow made Luke more powerful, right, than mm. he was used, he usually is. So he somehow debated Vader, which even that sounds weird, but from a continuity standpoint, it made sense, I guess. And there was no indication that Luke actually know that he was powered by the crystal. So maybe even in EU, they explained that Luke was confident against fighting Vader. Ah, Vader, I beat, I kicked your ass last time, I'm gonna do it again. Oh shit, there's no crystals. Ah, my hand. Yeah, that's basically how it happened. Mm. Yeah. But in Disney Star Wars, it doesn't make sense. Because Luke already got lost to Vader, and thought it was a good idea to fight against Vader again, despite the fact that his training was not even completed. Hell, another thing, in this issue, Star Wars 2015 issue 2, he's actually even weaker than he was in Splinter of the Mind's Eye, because not even a year had happened. To me, Splinter of the Mind's Eye makes sense, because he could be a little cocky, because he did defeat Vader. But I don't know what confidence this Luke Skywalker had fighting Vader again, despite the fact that he got his ass kicked the first time. Mm-hmm. So maybe Jake Alien Maker already existed at this point. Oh. We just didn't know it. <laughs> well, I guess there is that. Anything else to mention on this one? No. Okay, next. Okay. Well, Darth Vader decided to make multiple visits to Tatooine. Even though he hates that plan of a passion and would not want to set foot on it after episode three. So that's a problem. Uh, so, Dolan, you gotta say something quickly on that one? Yeah, this is called not understanding the character. This is when half who don't know anything 
right stories by in face value. I mean, it does try to do something weird by having Vader go around killing ten people because he hates them, but oh. he shouldn't be in the planet in the first place. Oh, speaking of that, and guess what? Not only did Vader travel to Tatooine, he murdered an entire tribe of Tusken Raiders. <laughs> Yeah, he actually did that in Darth Vader 2015 issue 1. <laughs> he killed Tusken Raiders in Tatooine for a second time. Yeah. Vader killing Tusken Raiders is not so weird or absurd, but he shouldn't be in the planet in the first place, which is the problem. Oh. Yeah, maybe if these Tusken Raiders or some travelers who decided to travel the galaxy and Vader found them, it would make sense. But no, why would Vader himself visit Tatooine? Oh, and this comic takes place literally after the Death Star exploded in episode 4. Ah. So like days or weeks after the Death Star exploded, Vader decided to pay a visit to Tatooine and literally kill Tusken Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when Vader's supposed to have finally grown over what happened in episode 3 and what happened before, but nope. He still killed Tusken Raiders out of hatred, I guess, for them, which I understand, but... Uh, what do you think of this one, Hanson? I don't know much to say. He shouldn't go to Tatooine. Emotional barrier that would keep him from ever going back, so... Mm -hmm. Just doesn't make any sense. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Though it does beg the question, why didn't he visit the planet before to, look, to find Luke Skywalker? But <laughs> there's that. Okay, so next, okay, this is, uh, this is one that I actually caught on today. So apparently in Star Wars uh, 2015, annual number one, so Palpatine had used force lightning and electrocuted a rebel spy called an Ray, and he even drew him off his own shadow using the force. So despite an Ray surviving the encounter with Palpatine with nothing but a broken arm, like he just broke his arm and he needed to use a cast. Somehow, like several issues later uh, in Star Wars, in issue 19, his face was disfigured, and apparently the explanation was because of the force lightning, even though when he survived, the encounter with Palpatine, he had no visible scars in his face. So the this figure man came during with time, or how did that happen? <laughs> Maybe the author realized he or she made a mistake, mistake while drawing this, so they fix it in the next issue. Uh, it's possible. I mean, I, I guess. Now, according to Wikipedia, exposure to force lightning can cause disfigurement, but an ev like. His disfigurement happened over time, not immediately. And Luke Skywalker yeah. never got disfigured. Neither did others that suffered from Force Lightning. So, how did this happen? I mean, we even see several beings pretty much at the receiving end of Force Lightning, even in TCW, you know, because Dooku lo loved to use Force Lightning a lot. So, why don't we see more beings being disfigured by Force Lightning? Got an explanation for this one, guys? I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Hanson? No. Okay, well, next one. Okay, this is a big one. Darth Vader, 2017, issue one. It basically is kind of a, uh, like a reenactment or retelling of what happened at the end of episode three. You know, when Vader had heard that Padme died, he was using the force to destroy everything in the room. And if you remember, he destroyed everything uh, while Palpatine was just standing there witnessing everything and smiling. But this comic decided, oh, we're going to change that a little bit. And Vader is going to free himself of the force and even go as far as actually force choke Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was actually force choking Palpatine, and after Palpatine told him told him some shit, it pretty much convinced Vader to let him down, and then Palpatine decided to use force lightning on him immediately. <laughs> what do you guys think of this one? <laughs> I mean, I can see where Soul was coming from, <laughs> but this is just one of those things where it doesn't make sense for Vader to do that. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, we never see this happen in the movie at all. I mean, well, that's, just... well, this takes place immediately after he screams no. So no, it's actually that. the same time. It's actually the same time. Like he literally, like straight out, got out of the table and immediately force choked Palpatine. It wasn't after. Well, do we see him scream no in the comic? He did say no. After? No, I like mean, literally, it... he was like no, no, no. No, and then when he comes out, he literally has like Palpatine uh, crashing, at, crashing at the wall and holding him in force choke. 
was the no, 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 no inner monologue, or does he literally go and say no, 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 no? The first four no's were monologue, but the last one he did actually say it right as Palpatine was crashing in a wall. Uh. And the first issue actually depicts Vader getting out of the releases, the handcuffs from the table. So, yeah, it was right at the same time that he got released from the table. It wasn't <laughs> after he said no. Mm. So, thoughts on that, Hanson? No, let's move on. Okay. So, next one, okay. <laughs> I think this one's <laughs> going to piss off Doan because he likes, you know, the military aspect of Star Wars. So... Oh. There's this stormtrooper that his name is Skrell, and he apparently uses a green lightsaber as his main weapon, even though no comic issue or any source says that he was trained by Bader or any force sensitive to use it. In fact, he self-trains himself by using remote droids, similar to Luke, and Bader even at one point confirmed that the trooper was not force sensitive, nor even fit to be a Sith, but yet he allowed the trooper to use the saber regardless. And this trooper is so good with the saber that he not only has faced Luke Skywalker in multiple lightsaber duels, but he even at one point deflected a blaster bolt back at some of the rebels that were shooting at him. So, <laughs> thoughts on this one, guys? A normal human yeah, normal. stormtrooper deflects a laser bolt. Mm -hmm, yep. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say that nonsense. <laughs> Not only that, but facing Luke Skywalker in combat. And to keep in mind, this, these comics take place after Episode 4. So after Luke Skywalker has been either self-training himself, uh, using the lightsaber, as well as some other trials he's faced. So... Hanson, you got anything to say on this one? <laughs> I find it hilarious myself. No. Mm, okay. Do I got one quick question. If stormtroopers, normal stormtroopers can just casually use lightsabers if they prefer to use them, why don't we see more of them using lightsabers? Like, why is it just one? And why was it, if this trooper shows promise in using the saber, why doesn't Bader or some other force sensitive train him to use it? Similar to how Duke could train Grievous. Got something to say on that, though, one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anything else to say on this one? Nah, nah, nah. No. Okay. Next, Darth Vader 2015 issue 23. So, <laughs> this guy called Silo, he apparently made this off switch for Vader's suit. A an off switch, yeah. A remote off switch that just turn that you can literally turn on or off Vader's suit. And this immobilizes Vader, as in literally make him unable to move. Now, I got a question. How is it that nobody else has been able to replicate this type of technology to use against Bader in combat? Or, better yet, how come Bader can't move even when his suit is deactivated? Like, he's not some robot you turn on or off, some man's out of life for suit. So, yeah, what do you guys got to see in this one? This one's just stupid and makes no sense. Mm-hmm. That one? They shouldn't. They should. I mean... Why wouldn't Vader ever know that some kind of switch like this would ever exist? Like, did Silo made him made this himself? Yes. Ah. Uh, mm-hmm. Made it himself. Yeah, I think Vader will prepare something like this, like put some kind of a special switch or system inside his suit so n nobody can just turn him off. Because <laughs> that sounds extremely stupid. It does. And it's like an artificial weakness for the second most powerful safe currently in the galaxy so yeah <laughs> yeah this one's stupid <laughs> so indeed anyway so let's move on from this one so next so okay in several Darth Vader comics Darth Vader 2017 and 2020 so there's several times that Darth Vader's limbs the mechanical limbs were either cut or destroyed so, normally, Bader would need, like, a medical droid or somewhere to fix them, right? With tools and everything. But these comics actually portray Bader using the Force to literally have nearby droid or mechanical parts to pretty much fix his mechanical limbs with it. Like, purely using the Force. No need to use any mechanical tools or repair tools on it. Just using the Force, he can pretty much just do it. Now... Well, that's convenient. It is convenient, though it begs the question, why didn't he use this before? You know, maybe uh, maybe in episode 6 to get his right arm fixed and fight Luke Skywalker again. <laughs> so, 
thoughts on this one? <laughs> uh, I, got, I don't have much to say about this. It's just nonsensical. Mm -hmm. Henson? Oh, uh, let's move on. Okay. Now, this is a... Now, this is another big one. So... You talked about this one before, Hanson, and I think you'd like to elaborate on this one. The Kanan comic, issue 2, originally depicting how Order 66 happened when Kanan was around in the Jedi Order, and how Deepa Balava pretty much got killed by the, the clones. But then that was reckoned by Bad Batch. So, would you like to elaborate on this one? I mean, just having the Bad Batch there, period. Because in the comic, obviously, they weren't there. And in Bad Batch, we see that they played a big role in how Kane got out of there. So, nothing more to add. It's just a massive, massive retcon. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even make sense in universe. <laughs> mm hmm. Yep. There's that. Gotta say anything on this one, though, one? No. Okay, there's that. Now, here's another big one that I just caught on myself today so Darth Vader 2020 issue 7 Vader was punished brutally punished by Palpatine because he failed to bring Luke Skywalker to the dark side you know episode 5 and he also let Sabe and her army that was supporting Padma Vidala escape alive like those two big failures Vader's punishment was literally to use the force to destroy three of four of Vader's mechanical limbs <laughs> like he literally like he literally used the force to destroy both his feet and his left arm he just had the right arm and like that he pretty much sent Vader to die on Mustafar and taunting him by telling him oh gather your strength and pretty much find your way back to me and like, he let him there to die with only one mechanical limb, his arm. And, and not only that, but Palpatine also sent an assassin to pretty much not let Vader escape Mustafar. Are alive. So Vader's running from his life, and he even said to the assassin that Palpatine will simply consume and throw him away, as Palpatine did to Vader. <laughs> okay. Though, one, do you want to say what's the big problem with this, or shall I do it? Wait. Uh, oh, if Vader dealt with the, this between episode 5 and 6, how the hell did he, Palpatine, did not see Vader wanted to kill him? Yeah, that does make sense. I mean, this line, right? Yeah, you threw him into Mustafar with his in body, almost, you made him disabled, and then you also sent assassins, yet you didn't see he would betray you, or try to kill you. Right. And not only that, but Vader was more than okay to still be subservient to Palpatine in episode 6. Like, uh. the fuck? How, how did this happen? Like, how did they reconcile so quickly? Granted, the, the remainder of the comic pretty much says that, but the fact that this even happened in the first place makes no fucking sense. So Vader, I'm keep in mind, in regards to Palpatine not seeing or figuring that Vader would betray him, he made clone bodies of himself so well that's the EU. he had a backup plan well that's the eu but there's a star wars no world. i mean in the new canon oh you're talking about rise of skywalker oh yes oh that, oh, that in itself we'll get to it in the next video because that is a its own can of worms <laughs> uh so point is he had a plan mm-hmm well, even if he had a plan for that one, how is it that Vader was still okay to serve Palpatine after that? I mean, keep in mind, Vader, by this point, especially this point, is already planning on overthrowing Palpatine, so it's just a matter of biding his, buying his time and waiting for Luke to join him. I'd be so it's not really about being subservient, it's just about waiting it out, and not to mention, again... He literally has nothing else. Agreed. Yeah, I can see that. Though, this was a huge thing. Like, I don't know how Vader could not seek revenge after that. Like, really shortly after that. But, yeah. So, no one got anything to say on this one? No, I pretty much said that. Okay. So, there's that. Now, final one on my list. Uh, okay. So, okay. This one's for you, though, one. <laughs> Jango Fett is not a Mandalorian and has no ties to Mandalore. 
But of course, Mandalorian Season 2 pretty much said... Oh no, he actually is a Mandalorian. <laughs> you know, the Clone Wars Season 2 <laughs> and the Star Wars character Encyclopedia from 2016 said that he is not a Mandalorian, no ties to Mandalore. But Mandalorian Season 2 changed that. <laughs> so, thoughts on this one? They do this changing stuff a lot. Huh. <laughs> uh, so many retcons. <laughs> yep. Got anything to say on this one, Henson? No, hmm. didn't make any sense back then, so changing it back only made sense. Hmm. Okay, so there's so that's pretty much it in regards to my list of contradictions, unless you guys got some other contradictions to list. No. Okay, yeah. well, then as you guys saw, that's... Well, that's actually the part one of the list of contradictions this Star Wars has. Now, part two would be dealing with the sequel trilogy era, which... Oof, that's gonna be even more meaty than this one, so stay tuned for that. So, yeah, now we get to the conclusion, so who wants to go first on that one? I'll go first. Okay, go. Yeah, these people writing these things have absolutely no hint of intelligence, and I don't know what happened to Star Wars. It just makes me sad. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Mm. Not about lack of intelligence, it's about a lack of care of any kind from the higher-ups. Because the thing is, as someone who's actually gone through at least a handful of the stuff beyond the films and shows in regards to new canon, when there's continuity, it's pretty good. Not to the extent of the EU, but we do see that when it comes to individual writers... They do care about at least connecting their work to other stories. And the problem is, you don't have a group to keep track of the finer details. Mm -hmm. And I would also like to say, if the stuff we talked about has been explained, let us know in the comments below just so... We can clear that up. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, my conclusion on this... Well... This may be just the beginning of this two-part video, but... It's already a mess, and I definitely hope that... Well, Lucasfilm does something to remedy this, because... Well, this just... It's a big contradiction after contradiction, like, it's just... Uh, something needs to be done. I don't know if massively retconning it would be the solution or just... Well, a better kind of hierarchy would probably be a start. So, there is that. I don't have much to say in the conclusion here because part two is gonna pretty much continue on with this, with the sequel trilogy era. And we're definitely gonna have a lot more to say in there. So, until now, well, we'll see you guys on the part two on this video series. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah.